Hi again, here we are to talk about daily JavaScript. And in the last video, I talked about how to pull a random element out of an array. And what I'd like to do here is I'd like to um, build a random set of, of elements here, right? So these are all the same on the front, but when we click on them, they flip over, right? And so there's a, there's a picture with a color on the back side, and you can see here, you know, there's a, there should be a pair for each image, right? Um, oh, let's see, um, almost done here. There we go, right? So you can see there's two of each one. And I actually have 25 different pictures, so it shows, you know, it pulls up a random set and you know, if we refresh it, you'll see you'll see some different images this time, but there will, there will always be two of each picture, right? So, um, oh yeah, this one actually goes with the one over here, right? Um, so there we go, right? So how do we, how do we do that? How do we apply that random thing to our um, to our example? Um, this is my finished example, and I actually want to rework this a little more. But uh, this is what I, what we're going to try and work to. Um, but the first thing we want to do is we want to just get the random pairs. Okay, so we want to create. Um, you know these flipped images, and we want them to um, to be paired, right? We want two of each, you know, image and background color, right? And a random set. So, what do I do here? So this is looking at my example, and let me just go through how I set this up, and then we'll go over it and and recreate it. Um, so, for me, uh, what I did, and you could do this differently. I I actually created a class name for each alien, you know, background. So, you know, this is the first image right here. There's 25, so they're all alien 32, 1 through 25, right? So here's the first picture, you know, here's the second picture, and the third picture, and the fourth one, right? So, you know, in order to apply the image to an element on the screen, what I did is I used a class name. So if I apply a class name, then, you know, that, that, element in HTML will display this particular picture. And I know it seems a little tedious because I have 25 different classes, but I, you know, I like this. It does seem a little tedious to type all this, but I like it because um, the alien, the image is very specific and then it goes with a color. And so by keeping this portion in the style sheet, you know, you can easily update the color and the image name, you know, without, um, having to get it way into the logic type code, right? That That is going to be our JavaScript that we write. So it's a little bit tedious here, but it's kind of nice because it keeps like the the presentation, the, you know, the graphical look of everything in, you know, CSS where it's easy to edit, okay? Even though it is longer to write, right? So I have 25 of these of these class names, right? And they're all just alien 1 through 25, okay? And what I did was I created an array called Alien Array, and then I named all of the 25 class names here. Okay, so there's all my 25, and we could have we could have you know maybe used a, a for loop to generate the the names here. I actually just typed them all in, right? We could have used a for loop to just generate these strings, but you know essentially every class name that I created above is listed here as a string. Okay. And then what I did was I, I went through this process um, just to create the random ones, and we'll do it over again. Um, I first um, duplicated the array, and I did it with slice, okay? So we talked about slice in the last example. So here, to create a duplicate of the array, I called slice starting at item zero, and I didn't include an ending item. so it returns the entire, you know, array as a copy, okay? So, I and I did this because um, that way I would have my original array left if I want to go back and, you know, recreate the, the you know, the, the, you know, the game again to start over. Um, in my example, you can't really start over unless you refresh the page, but later I might want to add that ability. And if I, if I want to create... Um, random items, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete an element every time I pull one out. I'll find a random one and then pull it out. And if I deleted it from the original array, then if I wanted to go play the game again, 
you know, those items would be missing, right? So, so that's why I duplicated the array here. Okay, so I copied the array. And the next step, let me zoom in on this a little bit, right? So for the next step, um, I created an empty array, and this will be the array that we use to, um, to create the tiles on the screen. Okay, so I called that tile array. And then I just made a variable here to tell me how many pairs I needed. And I, I made a couple adjustments to the size of the, um, of the grid here because before I had a three by three grid and that's an even number of tiles, it's nine, right? And I can't create pairs out of nine. So I added another row or another column here. So I have 12 now and that gives me you know, an even number. So I can have six pairs, right? So this is the number of pairs right there. Okay, six pairs. Um, then to set up the array, I looped through all of the items, or actually I looped through the number of pairs that I have, right? Um, so I, I went from zero to one less, or to less than, you know, the, the, the tile pairs, right? And then I got a random number from the count of the array, so this temp array is, you know, our full array with 25 items in it. I got a random number from it, right? So I remember I made that random function up above here. That's going to give me a, ra a random integer, okay? Um, you know, from, from this, from zero to, you know, one less than the range, okay? So I just made a little function there to help me out. And uh, so this is our random number, so we pick one, right? And then what I did is I used splice. So from the last example, remember we used splice to remove one item at this index, at the random index. So we pull one of the items out randomly. And then I just did this, I, you know, I used um, concat, that just adds an item to the array. Um, to the tile array, right? So that's our tile array. Tile array actually, you know, concat actually returns to you a copy of the array. And the, the reason I did it this way is because concat is a function that lets you take two arrays and put them together, okay? And splice returns an array. It doesn't, it doesn't return to us the string. It returns to us the string from, from you know, temp array, right, at this position, but in an array. So what I did is I took the tile array and then connected it with the array here, and then that gave me a new array, and I set that in tile array. So essentially, I'm just kind of stringing these arrays together with concat, right? And then I just did it again, because remember, I want pairs, right? So I grabbed one item here, and then I added it twice, right? I added it twice to, um, to the tile array. So since I'm doing this six times and then I'm adding the same tile twice, I'll have 12 tiles and, you know, they'll be in, in pairs, right? So once I've got this, you know, the, the, the paired tiles will all be in order. Like it'll be, you know, tile one, tile one, tile two, tile two, tile three, tile three, right? So they'll be in, in groups, right? And so, you know, after I've looped through this, what I want to do is I want to shuffle the array around to, to randomize it, right? So um, to do that, what I did was, was this, and maybe we'll take a look at these features like concat and, and this sort function, right? So what I did is I ran um, my tile array through array sort, okay? And sort, um, you know, it sorts everything alphabetically or numerically. So if you don't put anything here, it'll sort the values. Um, alphabetically or numerically. So if you have numeric values, they'll get sorted by number. If they're alphabetical, they'll get sorted by their alphabet, you know, character number value, right? Um, so essentially, they'll get sorted alphabetically. Um, if you want, you can put a function here. And the function, it's a little complicated to explain, but essentially, the ran, like the function that you put in here gets two values, right? It gets the, the current item in the array and then the next item in the array. Okay, and you can compare those and then you can return a value true or false to say like how those items should be sorted. What I did for this to just create a randomized array to make it easy is this randomize method um, returns a random value between zero and one. So essentially it returns true or false, but randomly. 
Okay, so you can see randomize here just says return, you know, random two, and you remember our, our random range function returns uh, a value between zero and one less than the number that you pass to it. So, you know, if I pass a two, random is going to return either a one, true, or a zero, false, right? So in JavaScript, a one is true and a zero is false, okay? So what happens here is with sort, um, sort looks at every item in this array, and then for each of those items, it gets a random value of true or false. And that random value says, you know, true, this item should go first, or false, it should go last, you know, okay? And that essentially, you know, it, you know, people that are really into numbers might say this is not truly random, but it's, it seemed to be pretty random to me. So, um, so it worked pretty good. Um, so anyway, that's what's going on here. And then, you know, here I, I console logged the, the array. So what you'll see is if we, if we go back here and we, we refresh the page, I'm going to click in the console here and uh, make the text a little bigger there. And then uh, I'll refresh here, and you can see when it loads up the page, this is the array that we're using, and it should have 12 items in it. And you can see they're pretty random, right? It's number 23, number 6, 25, 25, 9, 9, 3, 16, 16, 23, right? Actually, it does seem like maybe the pairs are a little close together. Let's do it again. 10, 18, 22, 22, 18, 23. It seems pretty random. You know, it does seem like you end up with some pairs. Maybe I should sort them randomly, like twice or something, right? But uh, you could maybe come up with a better randomizer, but uh, but that's what I used, right? So anyway, so now that I've got my, my array randomized, then I can assign each one of the classes here, right, in this array to each one of the back divs, that is the, the back side of each of the flipping ones, right? So this was my next step here, right? So I, I got all the back items, and then I used jQuery's each function, okay? And the each function loops through every item in a collection, right? So here we're making a collection by selecting all elements with this class name. And for each of those elements, inside this function here, the keyword this represents one of those elements. And then each returns an index value, right, which is the, the index of the element, right? So in other words, like if I, if I say, you know, jQuery select dot back, then if there's three, you know, elements on my page that have the class name back, then the I value here will be 0, 1, 2, right? You know, for each, as we loop through each of the three elements, and then dollar sign this will be each of those elements. So the first time through the loop, I is 0. This is the first item that was class name back. Next time through the loop, I is 1, and this is the next item with class name back, right? Etc. okay? And so what I did here is I just said, okay, well, you know, this dot add class, and then I said, you know, item from the tile array is going to be, you know, um, you know, at the at this index right here, and apply that to uh, to to this element, right? And then I gave the element also. I, I went to the parent element, right? So if you recall, our um, our divs are arranged in this way. There's the front of the card and the back of the card, and then they have a parent element that actually does the flipping. And you're going to be clicking on this parent element. So when you click on the parent element, I want to know what the back is. And you could, we could do a, a fancier selector, but what I did is I just assigned a data attribute called data name and the class name for the, uh, for the tile, right? So that way, uh, you know, every tile, the back tile has the class name, but the parent, the, the flipping tile, right, has a data attribute, data name, with the class name also. And we can, we can view that in, uh, in jQuery, right? So if I look at them here and we see, like, the first one should be alien5, then um, if I, you know, inspect it, you can see that the back div, class back, has card class and back class. 
and then it also has alien 5 class. And then its parent element, which is this guy here, class box, you can see that it has data name alien 5. Now the reason for this is when I click on these, I want my JavaScript to ask for the data name so it knows that you clicked on the one with uh, you know this particular picture which is alien 5 and then if you click on another one it can compare the name right this alien 5 name and if it doesn't match like the second one is alien 21 so um, you know if I click on the first one and the second one you can see they, they don't match because the names aren't the same this one right here on the end is matching it says alien 5 so if I click on this and then I click on this one, my script can say, oh, well, you know, the, uh, the name matches, and therefore we know that that's a match, okay? So anyway, so this video is getting a little long, so I kind of went over everything. Maybe I'll make another video, and we'll cover all of the features that I talked about there, okay? And we'll just re I'll just rebuild it, right? So uh, thanks for watching, and I hope that that's interesting to people, and uh, you guys all have a nice day.